Hello everyone. Welcome to the AWS Certified AI Practitioner Bootcamp session. In this session, under 15 minutes, we will cover key generative AI and machine learning concepts including tokenization, context window, explainability, all with the depth you need to pass the certification. First, we will explore essential generative AI concepts like tokenization and context window. Next, we will dive into model explainability using partial dependency plot and cover human-centered design for explainable AI in machine learning. Finally, we will look at Amazon Bedrock's pricing model and how to manage cost effectively. We have a lot to cover. Let's dive in. Tokenization is the process of breaking input text into smaller piece called tokens. These could be words, subwords, or characters depending on the model. Different models tokenize text differently. Let's understand with an example. The sentence Cloud Expert Solutions courses are best could be split into eight tokens, and the eight tokens will be Cloud, Expert, Dash Solution, Semicolon, Space Courses, Space R, Space Best and period. You can see even special characters like semicolon and periods are also considered as token. When you are using large language models to generate text, LLM uses token to understand the statistical relationships between the words to produce the next word in a sequence of tokens or in a sentence. If you want to play around, you can go to platform.openai.com slash tokenizer this is an online utility by OpenAI and here you can try with different sentences and you can see the number of tokens and character. Here I have used Cloud Expert Solutions AWS Certified AI Practitioner Bootcamp is the best course to pass the certification. And if I'll use GPT-40 or 4 Omni model or even GPT-40 Mini model, it will break into 19 tokens and the characters will be 107. If you will move to GPT 3.5, the number of tokens will be changed and for that case it will be 20 tokens. If you go to GPT 3 legacy model, the number of tokens will be 22. Based on different models you are going to select, the number of tokens will also vary. Understanding how LLM uses token is very important because most foundation models, including those on Amazon Bedrock, charge based on the number of input and output tokens. Understanding the tokenization will help you estimate both uses and cost when interacting with the models like Titan, Cloud A, or other models in your Amazon Bedrock. Now let's review context window. A context window is the maximum number of tokens a model can process at one time. Think of it like a memory span. The more tokens it can handle, the more it can understand long documents or conversations. Any LLM model with large context window requires more memory and processing power because it will process a bigger chunk of the document. Here is a diagram to represent token size based on the available model. And as an example, Cloud A can process up to 100K tokens while Gemini 1.5 Pro can handle 1 million tokens at a time. You must be thinking, why it is matter? Because it impacts the size of the document you can process. If you have a longer context, that means you will get a better understanding, but obviously the cost will be higher. If your prompt plus response exceeds the window size, you might get a truncated or irrelevant result so for the exam, please remember that token limits affect from design, response quality and cost of your model. Now let's understand model explainability and we'll review partial dependence plot. Partial dependence plot shows how one input feature affect the predicted output of a machine learning model while averaging out the effect of all other features. It helps you understand if you only change this one feature, how will the model's prediction change? And why does it matter? Because PDP or partial dependence plot 
aim to make complex black box machine learning models like neural network more interpretable. It helps you explain or interpret your model's behavior, especially in critical domains like lending, healthcare or insurance. It also provides a visual way to understand the relationship between features and predictions, making it easier to identify potential issues or insights. Let's understand the concept with a real world example and let's say you have trained a machine learning model to decide whether to approve or reject a loan application. In terms of features for your model, it could be applicant's age, income, credit score or loan amount. And the prediction output, what you are looking for, probability of loan approval, a number between 0 and 1, which will be the probability score. And what we want to understand here, we want to understand how does income alone affect the approval rate. Here is some data points for us and we can create a PDP chart using X axis as income and Y axis as approval probability. And if we draw that plot, it will look like this. The curve shows that as income increases, the likelihood of approval also increases, but it starts to plateau after a certain point. We can also interpret this graph as income has a positive relationship with loan approval as expected, but there is a diminishing return after 100K income and approval rate stops increasing significantly. And why this is useful? Because for regulators or auditors, it will show if the model is treating people fairly, that is no sudden drop in approval rate for older applicants or for applicants with a different ethnicity, but a stable income. Next, we are going to review human-centered design explainable AI. We'll break that into chunk and we'll understand what is explainable AI or XAI. Explainable AI means designing AI systems that human can understand and trust. Instead of just saying yes or no, the AI explain why it made a decision. As an example, a loan approval model does not just say rejected, but it should say rejected because credit score is below 600 and debit to income ratio is too high. Now let's understand what is human-centered design? Human-centered design or HCD means building technology that starts with the people's need, not just data or code. It's about designing a system that are understandable, are useful and relevant, and help people making better decisions. Now, when you combine both human-centered design for explainable AI or XAI, it means Designing AI explanation that are clear, meaningful, and helpful to people using them. It's not enough for an explanation to be mathematically correct, but it must make sense to a human being. Human-centered design for explainable AI comes with three key goals. And now let's break down the key goals one by one. To start with, design for amplified decision making. It helps people make smarter, faster, and more confident decisions with AI support. What does it mean? AI should not replace humans' decision-making, but it should enhance it. That means the AI should provide clear, explainable insights that empower users to make better choice. It also provides user confidence in the system by providing reasons and letting them interact or explore alternative scenarios. The second principle is designed for unbiased decision making, which ensures decisions are fair and explanations reveal potential bias or discriminations. From our previous example, if the loan denial because of most influential factor like a zip code if the zip code correlates with race or a certain demography, then this could be a proxy for discrimination. Now a human reviewer or a compliance officer can spot and correct the bias. So under human-centered design, the model explains not just the prediction, but also how sensitive features impact the model. 
and it should provide tools for auditing or correcting bias. The last principle, designed for human and AI learning decision making, which enables both the human and the AI to learn and improve over time through interactions. What does it mean? Human-centered explainable AI isn't just one way, that is from AI to human, it's a collaboration loop. Humans learn from the model and the AI adapts to human feedback or changing the need. Before we conclude, let's review Amazon Bedrock pricing models. Amazon Bedrock provides different pricing model and we'll start with on-demand. With on-demand mode, you can only pay for what you use with no time-based term commitment. Here pricing is based on number of inputs and output token. For text generation model, you are charged for every input token processed and every output token generated. For embedding models, you are charged for every input token processed. Whereas for image generation model, you are charged for every image generated. On-demand mode is based for low or unpredictable traffic or for prototyping, testing, or for occasional uses. The next is batch. Under batch, you submit large set of requests at once and the AI model process them asynchronously. You don't get the result immediately. However, you wait for a batch job to complete. The pricing model is very similar to on-demand and it will charge part token pricing, but usually cheaper due to efficiency under batch, you process bulk job at a time. Under batch mode, you get 50% lower price compared to on-demand pricing mode. Batch mode is based for high volume, non-real-time use cases. That means summarizing thousands of documents overnight. And the last is provision throughput. With provision throughput mode, you can purchase models unit for a specific base model or a custom model. With the provision throughput pricing, you are charged by the hour and you have the flexibility to choose between one month or six months commitment. Provision throughput is based for mission critical applications, production workloads with predictable high volume traffic and companies which required SLAs to follow. Now let's review bedrock cost optimization strategies. To reduce bedrock cost, there are four key strategies and to start with prompt optimization. You should write concise, effective prompts and you should remove unnecessary instructions and you should use prompt engineering based practices. The next strategy is model selection. You should choose the right model for your job. You should use lighter or cheaper model when high accuracy is not critical. As an example, you can use Titan for semantic task instead of large language models. The next is you should choose the right pricing model. In previous slide, we discussed different pricing models. Your pricing model should be based on the use case. As an example, if you choose provision throughput capacity for a Titan model, and if you provision $5 per hour, then even if, if you don't use the model for 30 minutes, you will still pay $5 per hour charge. And last but not least, monitoring and budgeting. You should use AWS Cost Explorer to track token uses and also set budgets or uses alarm to avoid any surprises. You can also use SDK features to limit output tokens. For this certification, please remember adjusting models temperature, top K and top P does not impact any pricing. During the certification, you will get one question where AWS will try to trick you that model's pricing is dependent on temperature, top P and top K value. Last, we are going to compare different model improvement techniques and we are going to arrange them based on the cost implications. To start with prompt engineering, under prompt engineering, you are manually crafting better prompts to guide the model. In terms of cost involvement, this is directly on the input and output token. In terms of cost, it is very low. The second is RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. Under RAG, we combine 
prompt with real time external data or documents in terms of cost involvement here we have token uses vector database and embedding generation which is one time cost and the cost amount will be between low to medium but higher than prompt engineering the next is instruction based fine tuning under instruction based fine tuning we fine tune a model using task specific instruction and examples the cost will be for data labeling training time or the gpu hours and the cost will be between medium to high and the last is domain adaptation fine tuning under that we retrain the model on domain specific data maybe for legal medical or other domains here you are spending on data labeling compute training and also maintenance of the model and the cost implication will be very high during aws certification you might see one question related to this please remember this arrangement of model improvement techniques based on the cost that wraps up this module if you found this video helpful please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more aws exam preparation courses and cloud certification boot camps got questions or feedback drop them in the comment we love to hear from you thanks for learning with us at cloud expert solutions you are now one step closer to crushing your exam see you in the next module